Hey, so this is going to be a sort of different video than usual. This is the first in a little mini-series I'm calling Trains Theory, where I go over some of my thoughts or the production processes when I make stuff in trains. I asked on Twitter if you all would be interested in a video where I go over my process for building routes in trains, as is a question I sometimes get from time to time, so to a resounding two yes answers, I decided to go ahead and make this video. Now, I've been using Trains since January 2012, starting with Trains 12, so I've had about nine years of experience using surveyor mode as of the making of this video. I'm not claiming to be an expert or trying to say that anything I say here is the only way to go about making routes and trains, but I just figure I can give some tips and a look into a sort of theory of how I go about making routes and dioramas and trains. Everything recorded here will be in Trains 2019, so just keep that in mind if you're using an older version. Before I get into the actual creation process, these are my settings for trains as of now. So with that said, let's get right into it. When it comes to making brand new routes and trains, the idea comes to me after I see a picture somewhere on Twitter, Instagram, Discord, or somewhere online of a railroad location looks kinda cool. If it doesn't look overly complex or time consuming, I might take a stab at it and make it in trains. This might be recreating a real life location like 16th Street Crossing near the St. Clair River Tunnel in Port Huron, Michigan, or this little set of breakneck ridge tunnel on the New York Central's water level route. Sometimes though, it's not a real life location I recreate, and rather I take an existing location or concept and make a fictional set out of it. One day I wanted to try making an interurban electric railway in trains after looking at some pictures of the old interurban lines here in Michigan, but I didn't really recreate anything exactly one to one, it's primarily freelanced really. The set isn't finished, but you get the idea. Same idea though with this finished diorama which was inspired by this trench in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This one based on the parallel New York Central and Pennsylvania Railroad main lines out of Chicago. This single baseboard diorama set in a suburban 1980s Midwestern town. Or this one set in the northeastern US along a river. These are all just sets I've made with one general concept in mind, and mostly freelance the actual set pieces from there, while sometimes modeling the specific scenes from the real life inspiration. So I have the root idea, now I gotta spam left click and hope I can make the idea a reality. First thing I do with any route is set the grid to 5m or meters or whatever it is, instead of the preset of 10 meters. This allows for more precise ground and texture editing. It's much more flexible and looks nicer too. Depending on the era or region, I typically use a few different track splines. I use this Western Pacific or WP track from Trainsforge with its multitude of variations of jointed rail track for branch lines, short lines, or older era main lines. And then I use this JRNS, or US track, for modern welded rail main lines. I recommend doing some research, especially for American routes, as to what color ballast each region of the country uses, as it can differ from region to region or railroad to railroad due to the type of rocks available. After that, I need to choose a season for the route. Fall is my favorite season, so I often go with that because I've always enjoyed the general color palette and weather of fall. I'll typically use the built-in speed trees which have seasonal variations, and some of these Roy's trees too for fall roots. I make sure to use a good balance of colors with each tree in its respective color too. If it's early fall, I'll use more yellows, but if it's mid or late fall, I'll use more reds and oranges. For summer roots, I'll use a combination of speed trees and these ST series of trees and foliage. My computer is relatively good for gaming, and it can handle a good amount of 3D trees on screen, so I never really use 2D trees anymore. On occasion, I'll use them or mix them in with 3D trees in mountainous areas for some extra variation or to improve performance in areas with huge amounts of trees. You often see this done in some trains routes or routes made for railworks or train simulator. Basically, using 2D trees in distant locations and away from the main track can boost your FPS in game since they're far less graphically intensive, or at least as graphically intensive as a tree in trains can be. But because trains has some of the worst optimization I've ever seen for a video game, it honestly sometimes doesn't even matter in the end. Anyway, moving on to textures, it's really up to you depending on the season or region, but just make sure you're not using crusty textures from 2001 that look like they belong in a Nintendo 64 game. I find a base texture to work off of, then add other types of textures from there. I'll mix like two to three versions to add some realistic color variation. To better mix textures, turn your radius dial down when applying new colors of the same type of texture. Another thing is to use variations of concrete or asphalt textures for separate lots, because not every paved section is the same age or done by the same company in real life. 
A tip I have with textures too is to turn the scale down so they aren't oversized looking. To add variation to visual interest with textures, hold the bracket keys, or whatever you have it bound to in your key bindings, as you apply the texture, and it'll rotate the texture direction and give it more of a natural varied appearance. I tend to avoid using PBR textures in Trains 2019 because they don't really mix well with the bigger variety of non-PBR textures, plus they're already pretty buggy on their own anyway. Now depending on the region your route takes place in, it's going to be totally unique as to how the scenery is laid out whether it's a forest, rural fields, or urban setting. Either way, do some research and look at how the scenery is laid out along the railroad tracks in the region you're modeling, or if you're freelancing a route based near your area, think about what you see on a daily basis near the railroad and apply that to your set. Figure out what trees grow in the region, what's the topography like, what is the architecture like, stuff like that. But regardless, you want to have plenty of depth to your set. Think to yourself, where will you or other people be recording videos, taking screenshots, or running trains, and what will you or the viewer actually see? Think about the scenery density in relation to the tracks and what you'll actually be using the set for. For example, I'll only create and detail what I absolutely have to in order to get a point across for a video or a specific scene, but this isn't always the case. To add density to forest scenes, just add plenty of different types of trees and bushes that make sense for the area, and cover the ground level with grass splines to give the impression that it's not just some nicely manicured flat lawn. Also use bush or overgrowth assets to fill out any gaps you might see so the edge of the world or the forest floor is hidden. Be sure to use different sizes or variations of tree models too. Using the same tree over and over again just looks boring. For urban scenes, just have plenty of buildings and believable locations to fill out your world. However, if it's in an area you won't see from the train or up close, you can get away sort of just spamming buildings to create depth and a skyline, but just make sure they're all lined up like a real city block. But where you will see buildings from the train, they should all have a reason to exist, whether it's for the roads or the trains to serve. Now for rural fields, you'll have to add quite a few baseboards on either side of the track to give a believable sense of depth, since you won't have trees or buildings to cover everything up for you. Add at least enough to where it seems like the scenery keeps going from where you position the camera at the tracks. Sometimes hills can make this easier, but not every rural area has large hills. A lack of depth in trains ruins the illusion of the scene seeming like a real life location, and just reminds you, oh this is trains, because you can see the crust of the earth right there. That brings me to my next tip about topography. Variation in terrain height is important. Even the flattest of locations have some kind of hills or dips, so make sure to put the sensitivity dial to use and turn it down for precise adjustments. The slightest of adjustments can often give a set some kind of a dynamic appearance instead of just flat, where it looks rather uninteresting and lacks visual interest. On single baseboard sets like this, I used elevated terrain and track to create a sense of depth and to fill out the scene more to make it feel more compact instead of open and empty. This kinda all goes back to trains' days as a model railroad planning program and trying to envision your creation as a real life place where people live. Like I said, just do some research or go on Google Maps and figure out how the rural or city region you're modeling looks like and see how everything is laid out. Try to model some specific, unique scenes from real life to keep things interesting with your own freelance scenes. You want your routes to have distinct locations that are easily recognizable and allow for unique screenshots so not every location blends into each other. Even a simple pond or cutting in the trees can add some character. This is especially important if you want to make a talking train series in trains. Think of how distinct the locations were on the island of Sodor and Thomas the Tank Engine. That's the idea I had in mind when creating the sets for each of my train series. Another thing I tend to do with anything creative is focus on the small details to give my set some life. With trains routes, that involves placing down mailboxes, cars, people, residential fences, and landscaping and assorted scenery clutter. I also sometimes model little action scenes like people at a park, someone fixing their car on the side of the road, or taking pictures of the trains going by. Little things like these can make a set come alive like there's actual people living their lives there. Without them, it can make things seem rather dead or just plain out empty and feel a bit like a liminal space where only the trains live. Sure, other people might not notice these details immediately, if at all, but if I know it's there, I'm happy with that. The last thing I do before begin testing a route is to set the skybox and lighting. It's pretty much whatever you like best, but some skyboxes are meant for sunrise or sunset and can complement the lighting, so just keep that in mind. I tend to bring the lighting sliders to the left a bit to make things a smidge darker and feel a bit less flat looking, but just mess around with it a bit and see what kind of lighting you can make, because I'm still trying to master it myself. 
So before I get into the final part of the video, here's some other random miscellaneous tips. Use your control key to make fine height or rotation adjustments. One of the train's 2019 service patches broke this and made it stupidly buggy and really twitchy to use, so you just kinda have to put up with it. Some assets allow you to till or roll them, so take advantage of that for a more dynamic or rustic scene. Make use of the pick list if you see assets you think look cool for your current or future route so you don't forget them, or just assets you use regularly. Use layers when modeling stations or building interiors to prevent not being able to select the small details inside the station due to the way trains and selection boxes work. Use the track straightening tool for smoother curves, switches, and it just looks so much nicer. So use it! <coughs> use the plateau tool to make more realistic river or hilly scenes. Not every dip in the ground is the Grand Canyon. Place individual grass assets within grass spines for more variety. Hold shift when placing track spines to avoid them automatically connecting. And scenery transitions. In other words, make sure your larger sets have a smooth transition from countryside to city. I've seen a handful of routes where it seemingly goes from mountains or rural scenery to a big urban city with huge skyscrapers in the middle of nowhere with really no gradual transition. The buildings too just don't really make sense in their placement or just don't match the city's existing architecture. This also goes back to the previous theme of researching the city's architecture, just so you can get a general matching theme. Of course, this can all depend on the city, but most big cities tend to go from rural scenery to smaller suburbs, then outside downtown, then downtown. Not really just rural scenery to a big city in the span of a few thousand feet. Testing, 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 testing. My final phase of trains route building is actually testing the set. I'll just go ahead and take some screenshots and then send them to my friends to see what they think of the final scene after I was already showing them some work in progress scenes. If we think improvements are needed or we think of a new thing to add to the route, I'll just go back and finish it up. Otherwise, if I think the scenes look finished and good, I call it a finished product and then it'll sit and rot on my computer for all of eternity or it shows up in videos. Depending on the route size and my motivation, sets can take anywhere from a few days to months to complete. Just take your time, make it look nice and how you want, and there's no hurry. You aren't obligated to make anything you don't want to. So, that's my general theory or thought process behind making train sets. Like I said, I'm not trying to say I'm an expert or anything I say here is the only way you can make stuff in trains. It's entirely up to you in the end on how you want to make your trains routes. Just remember to take breaks and come back to your current project when you have a new idea or more motivation. Like with anything creative, even with trains, you can get burnout pretty easily. Good looking and bigger train sets can take a good amount of time to make, so don't rush yourself. And obviously, of course, this all takes practice. It can take several years of experimenting and just a bit of creativity because we all have to start somewhere. I know I sure did. I mean, just take a look at some of my older creations compared to now. you'll eventually sort of develop your own style and way of building trains routes. Regardless, I hope you learned something from this video, or maybe you learned a new way to go about thinking when you build trains routes. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this video, I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching.